All right, so the way the next couple of days are going will be like this. We're going to do, obviously, we'll do the warm-up for 11.5, and then we're going to do, who's this? I don't know. Okay. Then we're going to do um, two sections that are not in your book. We're, we're kind of supplementing the material in your book with the additional surface area stuff. So we've divided it into two parts, but really it covers uh, prisms and pyramids and then uh, cylinders and cones. That stuff will still be on your test, but you'll see like w the notes will come from outside of your book. Um, and then we're going to do volume of those four things, volume of surface area, I mean volume of pyramids and prisms and cylinders and cones. And then we're going to get into spheres. And then we're going to do a similar polygon. So that's the rest of this chapter. The test on the rest of it will be next. Right now we have it slated for next Thursday. Are you going to make us like find areas of these Yes. Okay, so 11.5 is just identifying these things, right? It's a determine whether the solid is a polyhedron. If it is, name it and find the number of faces, vertices, and edges. And then verify using Euler's theorem, the hardest theorem on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. So how do I know if it is a polyhedron or not? How is it not a polyhedron? It has if it's got curves. So is number one a polyhedron? No. no. Okay. Is two a polyhedron? Yes. yes. What kind of shape is that? A square pyramid. Good. So a pyramid is named by its base. Okay. In this case, it's sitting on its base. It's not necessarily always sitting on its base, but in a pyramid... The sides that connect the base to the vertex at the top are your lateral faces, okay? And then the thing that it's not touching the vertex at the top, that would be your base. So in this case, it's a square pyramid. And then it said, find the number of faces, vertices, and edges. I want you to know that this is something that my first grader does. Isn't that ridiculous? When he, yeah, like he doesn't do Euler's theorem, but he knows about <laughs> phases and vertices and edges. When I saw that, I was like, oh, excuse me. You guys are way smarter than, than, than they are from first grade. But yeah, they got introduced to it already. So how many faces are there? Five. Five. The four top sides, right, which are called lateral faces, and the bottom one. Five faces. Okay. How many vertices? Five. One, two, three, four, and the one at the top. And how many edges? Eight. eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All the lines you would draw if you were to draw this pyramid. Okay. And then Euler's theorem, which is what? F plus V equals E plus two. So five plus five equals eight plus two and ten equals ten. So we know we did it correctly. Okay, that's how you're using it to verify. Number three, same thing. Determine whether it's a polyhedron and then count the faces, vertices, and edges. Is this a polyhedron? Yes. 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 What, what kind is it? Pentagon. Pentagon prism. Good. Pentagonal prism. Okay. Don't worry. Spelling doesn't count. As long as I can figure out what it is because I spell enough things wrong, right? One, two, three, four, five sides on those faces. So the difference between a base and a lateral side that we're going to talk about today, you'll see is the shape of it. With a prism, all the lateral faces, okay, or the ones that connect the two bases are all parallelograms. They're four-sided. So when you're dealing with a prism like this is, the two shapes that are not parallelograms are going to be your bases, okay? They don't always sit on a base. Sometimes it's the front and the back. Sometimes it's the top and the bottom. In this case, it's the front and the back sides, right? So those are pentagons. And then there's two of them. That's how you know it's a prism. And then the parallelograms that are connecting them. Okay. So how many faces are there? Seven. seven. One, two, three, four, five around the sides and then the front and the back. Seven faces. How many vertices? Ten. ten. One, two, three, four, five. And then the back, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And how many edges? Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the same on the back. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And again, we can use Euler's theorem to prove it. Seven plus ten should equal fifteen plus two. 
17 equals 17, so we know we've done it correctly. Questions? Again, hopefully that was a pretty easy section to get you started into polygons. All right, so again, this is an add-in on your book, okay? But this section is going to cover the surface areas of prisms and pyramids. So we put the two P's together and the two C's together come next, okay? A prism and a pyramid, and then we're going to talk about cylinders and cones. So the lateral area and surface area, what's the difference? The lateral area is the sum of the areas of the lateral faces. So it's the area not including the bases. If I were to look at that pentagonal prism that we had, the lateral area would be the area of all the, of all the parallelograms around the sides, not including the bases. The surface area is the total area, so it's every face. The two bases and all the lateral faces. Which in a prism, there's two bases. In a pyramid, there's one. Okay, prisms. So we've identified what prisms look like. Okay, they have two bases and then the lateral faces that connect those bases. A rectangular prism is the one at the top. A triangular prism is the one there at the right. A uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. A hexagonal prism is there on the bottom. So the formula for the lateral area of a prism is perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. And total area or surface area, you'll see those two used interchangeably. is the lateral area plus 2 times the base area or 2B plus pH, because pH is the same thing as lateral area. So you're going to get a lot of formulas thrown at you the next week. Okay. Again, if you're one of those people that needs to make a list, then start it. If you're one of those people that Quizlet is the thing that does it for you, there's a Quizlet for this. All right, so if I look, I'm going to like just zoom in on this one, right? So this is my triangular prism. What are the bases there? Remember, if it's a prism with any other shape other than a rectangle, that other shape is your base. So what's the base here? The triangles are the base, okay? So if I wanted to find lateral area, I'd be finding the area of all three of the parallelograms, which in this appear to be rectangles. If I want to find total area, it would be all three of those plus the front and the back or plus the two triangles. Okay, So you're going to find it in different ways. One is just the lateral area, which would be pH, perimeter times the height. The other is 2B plus pH, which would be the total area, the area of the front base, the area of the back base, and then all the sides around. This is a hexagonal prism. What are the bases? The hexagons. So this pulls in the area of a hexagon. So you still have to know how to find the area of a hexagon, right? Because in order to find the area of that base, I'd have to do one half a n s to find the area of the pentagon. I mean the hexagon, and then find the rest of it. So two b plus ph. That b is going to be one half a n s. So depending on what the shape is, the b changes. This one. What's the base? The rectangles, does it matter which rectangles I use? The top and the bottom, the left or the right, the front and the back? Yes. No. So on a, on a rectangular prism, it doesn't matter because they are all rectangles. You get me? But aren't there two big ones? Doesn't matter. You can make the sides the bigger ones, okay? As long as you identify, so like if I say that this is the base, the front and the back are the base, then the rest are the lateral faces. So my 2B... The B comes from the front and the back. I could do the same thing with top and bottom and left and right. doesn't matter. Okay, that's the only one that doesn't matter is the rectangular prism. Well, and a cube. But that, a cube is a rectangular prism. So it doesn't matter. The rest of them do. The rest of them, obviously, if there's a triangle involved, I have to use the triangle as its base. If there's a hexagon involved, then it's a hexagon as its base. So let's say you're looking at the triangular one? Yep. So once you find the base of the triangle, you 
The area of the triangle. Yep, so if I'm finding 2B plus pH here, you're talking about for total area? Yeah. So the B is the area of one triangle. I'm going to double it because there's two. And then the perimeter of the base, so whatever goes around here, I'd add up those three sides, times the height of the prism. That's going to give me three areas or three of those, re of those rectangles. So you have to do what we did in like the letters plus the three to find the area? If it's a hexagon, exactly. Yeah. So if it's a rectangle or a triangle, hopefully you can figure it out a little bit easier. But if it's anything other, if it's a hexagon or a pentagon or an octagon, then you have to use the area of a polygon. I just have a question. Like, mm -hmm. once you, let's say you're looking at this one. Yep. Once you find the area of the hexagon, yep. you only multiply it by 2 and then add it to one of the areas? No, so 2B plus PH. Like, let's say you figured out that the area of one of those pentagons, I don't know, let's say it's 32 units, whatever it is, 32 units squared, right? Then I would do 2 times 32 plus the perimeter of the pentagon times the height of the prism. LA? LA is only going to give you, LA doesn't count the, the pentagon. So if you're saying do 2B plus, 2B plus LA, mm -hmm. this is that. So the lateral area is the perimeter times the height. You're still doing 2 times the base area. It's just sometimes they ask you for lateral area first. So if you already have that, you might as well just plug it in. Okay, and a pyramid. So the lateral area on a, py a pyramid, there's two methods to finding it. Okay, this is a regular pyramid with n lateral faces. So the, they're all triangles. The first method is find the area of one lateral face and then multiply it times n, however many sides there are on the base. And then the second is one half perimeter times l, and l represents the slant height of a pyramid. So if this is a square pyramid and I want to find the lateral faces, lateral faces is everything but the base. What's the base? The square. So how many Triangular lateral faces do I have? Four. So I do four times the area of each one of those triangles. So this would be one triangle. That's one way to find your lateral area. The other way is to do the perimeter of the base. So P always stands for the perimeter of the base. In this case, it's going to be four sides, all the same measurement. And then the slant height. So the slant height runs along the side of the pyramid. That would be slant height. There's one on either side. This would be slant height. It literally runs, it's slanted. It runs from the top to the outer edge of the bottom. Okay, that would be your slant height. Yep. Are the edges the same thing? No. So think about that being a triangle, right? You can actually have to make a right triangle out of that side. Should it give you like a, a base edge? So th this is where they get a little bit tricky. Sometimes it will give you the height of the prism, which we're going to talk about in a second. Sometimes it will give you the slant height, and then sometimes it will give you the lateral edge. But you can make a right triangle out of all of those and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing one. Regular height, which I mean, we haven't even talked about yet, but regular height would drop down from the vertex to the middle of the base. As though if you had a pyramid sitting in front of you, you put a pencil straight from the top all the way down. Whereas slant height, you would run down the side of the pyramid. Does that make sense? Sure. So lateral area uses the slant height. Total area, there's only one base this time. So it's B plus the lateral area, or B plus one-half perimeter times slant height. So this is the same thing as lateral area, right? So the difference between, one of the differences between pyramids and prisms is there's only one base, so it's just B. And then with a pyramid, you use slant height instead of regular height. So B plus one-half perimeter times the slant height. All right, so this is what they look like. This one says complete the table. So we've got to figure out what the perimeter of the base is. That's what P stands for. The area of the base, the lateral area, and the... Oh, don't worry about the volume yet. We're going to get to that later. Cross that out. OK. 
Okay, make that total area, or actually make it total area. Okay, it's the volume in the book. This stuff is not. So the first thing you have to do is identify what is this shape. It's a rectangular prism, okay? So perimeter of the base, let's pick a base. Does it matter with a rectangular what you pick to be a base? The 621. So you want the 621. So you want to do right and left? Yes. Okay, so, so Nick's going to lead us in saying that this and the left over here are the bases, okay? It's fine, it doesn't matter what you pick. So what's the perimeter of a rectangle where the two sides are 6 and 2? How do I find perimeter? Look at you. 6 plus 2 plus 2 plus 6, right? Add up all the sides. 8 plus 8, which is 16. Now the capital B is base area. So this is area of the base. How do I find the area of a rectangle? 6 times 2, which is 12. Lateral area, which is what? What's the formula for lateral area with a rectangular prism? Perimeter times height. So perimeter of the base, we said was 16. Now the height of the, you got to be careful here. The height of the prism is the section, is the segment that connects the two bases. So because we picked the two bases as the right and the left, what's the height of this prism? Four. Four, good. So the perimeter, I'm sorry, the lateral area is 64. And then total area, 2B plus pH, or 2B plus, we already found it, so we might as well use it, the lateral area. is 2 times 12 plus 64. So all the areas are going to be centimeters squared. The perimeter is the only one that's just centimeters. What would have happened had we picked the top and the bottom to be the bases? Would our perimeter of the base change? Yes, right? I would have gotten 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2, right? Which is 12. Would have changed the perimeter. Would it have changed the area of the base? Yes. So. Yes. 4 times 2, it would have been 8. Would it have changed the lateral area? No. Yes. Because now I'm doing the perimeter times the height, which is different. The only thing that's going to be the same is total area, right? If I pick different bases to be the actual, different sides to be the bases, it's going to alter the rest of it except for total area. Total area should be the same no matter what. Does that make sense? So my advice, and I know I followed Nick's lead, but to make it easier when we we're going over homework, is on a rectangular prism, pick the top and the bottom to be the base and the bases so that it's easier, okay? It doesn't mean it's wrong to do it another way, but when we go over the homework, I don't want to give you all four options for doing perimeter of the base and for doing the area of the base. It'd be easier if you stick with top and bottom. Alejandro. I understand where you got the two and the twelve from. The two and the twelve. So two is just from the two B. So B is the base area. We use the, the right side as the base area, I mean as the base. So this, the area of this is six times two, which is twelve. And then there's two of those, right? Because there's two bases. All right, what shape is this? A triangular prism, good. Specifically a right triangular, well, no, it just says a triangular prism. It doesn't give you that that corner is the right one. All right, so perimeter of the base. Obviously, what's the base in this case? The triangles are the bases, okay? Can't be any other way. Any other way you've gotten this wrong. So if it's any shape other than a rectangular prism, there's only one option for the set of bases. In this case, it's the two triangles. So perimeter of the base. You get one side on the top, the other two come from the bottom. So if this is three, then this is also three. If this is four, then this is also four. So I'd get four plus four, which is eight, 
plus 3, which is 11, the perimeter of the base. Isn't, that, isn't it cut? The, the cut is just showing you the height of it. The B is the base area. So if our base is a triangle, then the area of the triangle is one half base times height. So I'm talking, this is where it gets confusing. This B is the base of the triangle. So if I'm using this as the height, then what's the base? Four. Good. So this is 2 times 2.8. It's 5.6. We'll see. Okay, lateral area is perimeter of the base times the height of the base. So we already found the perimeter of the base, right? It's 11. I'm sorry, and the height of the prism, not the height of the base. The height of the actual prism which is 6. And then total area is 2B plus the lateral area, 2 times 5.6 plus 66. Which is 77.2. This would be centimeters squared, centimeters squared, centimeters squared, and centimeters. All right, this one, actually we're going to skip this for now because we're going to get into volume in the next section and then we'll come back to this. Not the next section, the next section in the book. Okay, regular square pyramid has a base edge of 6 and a lateral edge of 5. Find the following, and again, knock off the volume because we'll do that when we get to the book. So a regular square pyramid it says it has a base edge of 6. So base edge would be the edges on the base, which ours is a square. The lateral edge, which is going to be the edge of the lateral faces. So these here, this is a lateral edge. This is 5. This is 5. This is 5. And this is 5. It wants you to find the slant height first. So if I could picture just a lateral face, right? If I pulled off just one of those triangles, the bottom is 6 because that's the base edge. And the lateral edges are going to be the outer two. So this is five and this is five. The slant height is going to run directly down the center of it along the side. What kind of triangle is each of these lateral faces? Isosceles. So what happens if I draw the altitude from the isosceles triangle from the, base thing, from the vertex angle? It cuts us into two congruent pieces. What's the slant height? Four, right? That's a triple? David, where are you at? Three, four, five, right? So that's my slant height. The lateral area is the area of this triangle, so it would be one half base times height, which is one half of six times four, or three times four, which is twelve. The base area, oh, I'm sorry, that's the, that's the area of one lateral face. How many faces are there? So that's times four. And the other way to do that is one half perimeter times the slant height. So one half the perimeter of the base, six plus six plus six plus six, which is 24, times the slant height, which is four. And I'd get 12 times 4, which is 48. So either way, same answer. Alexis. What's the edge? Slant height. So it's along the side. Like slant height would run along the side of the triangle here. Oh, 
This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, base area. So what's the shape of my base? Square. square. How do I find the area of the square? Length times width or side squared, right? Because they're the same thing. 6 times 6, which is 36. Total area, which is B plus lateral area, or B plus one-half perimeter times the slant height. The B is 36, and the lateral area is 48. And then the altitude is the same thing as the height of the pyramid. So it's as if you, like I said, put a pencil straight through the tip of the pyramid down to its center. So it cuts this into half. That's going to be half your side length, which would be three. The slant height of it becomes the hypotenuse of that triangle, which is six. How do I find the missing side length? Yep. Pythagorean theorem. So the altitude or the height of this pyramid plus 3 squared equals 6 squared. Square root of 27, which is 3 and 9 and 3 and 3, or 3 root 3. So you're going to use, we'll, we'll do more with height when we get to volume because you need the height in order to get the volume. The rest of it you want to make sure that you know. The slant height, yeah. Oh, wait. I wrote the wrong thing. Yeah. This is 4. Slant height was 4. This is 4. This is 16. This is just 7. So I wrote the wrong slant height. Same process, but the slant height should have been 7, not 6. No, slant height should have been 4, not 6. But again, I, I wouldn't worry too much about height just yet. We definitely need it when we get to volume, but you don't need it to get to the area. Okay, last one. A regular triangular pyramid has a slant height of 9 and a base perimeter of 12 centimeters. Find the lateral area, the base area, and the total area. So this time my base is a triangle. And a regular triangle. What's regular mean? Everything's the same. So what kind of triangle has everything equal? Equilateral. An equilateral triangle. Okay, so this base is an equilateral triangle. It's going to obviously help us with base area, right? So it says the slant height is 9 centimeters. So along one of these signs, sides directly down the middle, and there'd be three of them on all three sides, it would be 9. And the base perimeter all the way around here is 12. So this would be your L. This would be P. How do I find lateral area for a pyramid? One half perimeter times the slant height. Am I missing anything? No, right? I'm, so far I'm giving everything I need, I can just plug it in. So this would be one half the perimeter of the base, which is 12, times the slant height, which is 9. So this is 6 times 9, this is 54 and its area, so it would have been centimeters squared. Base area, so now I have to find the area of a triangle that's equilateral, where the perimeter is 12, which means each side is what? Four. What's true about the angles inside an equilateral triangle? They're all 60. What happens when I cut one in half? I get a 30, 60, 90 triangle where this would be my A, this would be my A root 3, this would be my 2A. 
So whether I divide the 4 in half on this side to get the A, or I say 2A equals 4, either way I get this is 2, and this is 2 root 3. So it's flipped upside down, but the area of this triangle is 1 half base times height. 1 half, the base is 4, and the height is 2 root 3. This is 2 times 2 root 3, or 4 root 3. Now the hard part's over because total area is just B plus the lateral area, or 4 root 3 plus 54. And I can't combine them, so they stay separate as 4 root 3 plus 54 centimeters squared. So if one's got a root and one doesn't, you can't combine them. How are you doing? Still breathing? Yes? Okay. It's not an easy section, okay? And it is like the basis of what we're going to keep building on. Pyramids in particular, I think, are the hardest of the four solids. When we get to prisms and cones, they're going to seem so easy compared to what we just did. That's the good news. Because of what, think about what a, what a prism and a cone look like. What are the bases? Circles. They're always circles. You can't change them. Does that make sense? So it's a lot easier. It's like doing a pyramid with a circle as its base and doing a prism with circles as their bases. So it gets a lot easier. But it is two new formulas for each one. 